What is going on, everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And what we're going to take a look at is building a Docker container and a Docker image out of some Go code. And this Go code is going to be just a simple web API. But really what we want to focus on in this video is not the complexity of the code, but instead how to actually take a Go application that you can run locally, for example, package it up into a Docker image, create a container out of it, and then see that container run. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the demo. All right, so I have VS Code up here. I'm gonna maximize this a little bit so everybody on mobile can see it a little bit easier. And I already have this code written because nobody wants to sit here and watch me write Docker files and web APIs for 30 minutes. So instead, I got all this code here and we're just gonna go through it together. So the first thing is, I'm gonna open up my main.go file and I'm gonna have a few different imports in here. The first is gonna be FMT so I can print out. Then I'm going to have logs so I can print out some logs and then I'm going to use net HTTP. Now, there are a few different ways to make API calls in Go, but the net HTTP package is pretty much the standard, I would say. Um, that's really like what I've seen a lot being used. So then I'm going to have my main function and let's just kind of hold off on the main function for a little while. Let's get to the juicy stuff first. So the first function that we see here on line 13 is for the home page. And what it's going to do is it's going to pass in two arguments. One is going to be response and then the other is going to be R. The response argument is holding HTTP.ResponseWriter, which is essentially taking whatever you pass in. Like, for instance, we're passing in Welcome to the Go Web API, and then it's passing it to the console or to the web UI, anywhere that you're actually seeing that response from the API. And then we also have the http request and there's a pointer there that you can see so it's pointing to a specific value and that specific value is to bring back that request like a status 200 or something like that from an API call and then we have two print statements in here we have welcome to the go web API and endpoint hit home page so we just want to see that like you know that's what we're hitting and that's what we're actually going to see on the console endpoint hit home page but then the printf is going to actually show us the output in the UI itself. And then we also have another function here, and it's called the about me. Same arguments for response and arm. I'm going to have a little variable here that says who, Michael Levan, and then I'm passing in an F printf statement that says a little bit about Michael Levan. And then I also have a print ln here that it's endpoint hit by who, and that who is Michael Levan. That's where my name is right there in that variable. So that's what we're going to see if we do slash about me. And then speaking of the slashes where you can get to like a specific page, let's go ahead and talk about those in the request function or the request one function rather. So the request fun one function has two handles that it's handling for us. Uh, the one is the home page, which is just, you know, the root just slash that root page. And then the second one is going to be that slash about me where it can bring back a little bit about Michael Levan. And then we have a log fatal here. And within here, we're going to have the HTTP package using the list listen and serve function, and it's going to be listening on port 8080. So now we understand what our application is doing. So let's actually like literally go ahead and run it. So I'm going to do LS here. I'm going to CD into main and I'm going to do go run main.go. So this is going to start our API for us, our web API rather. I'm going to open up edge here Let me zoom in. I'm going to go Actually, this is a good point. This actually popped up on my other monitor. This pops up where it's a security alert, where it's just essentially saying, at least on Windows, you're going to see this, where it's like, hey, uh, do you want to allow this web API to run? Yep, we do want to allow it. I know what it is. So I'm going to type host 8080. Okay, and then if I go to like about me, I could see a little bit about Michael Levan. Perfect. So we know that it works. We know that our application works successfully. Now, let's actually containerize that application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my Docker file now. And within this Docker file, very, very short, we're using the Golang latest image and that's being pulled from Docker Hub. We have a run command, we're creating a build directory, that's where our application is gonna sit and where we're gonna call it from. And we also are gonna set that as our working directory. Next, 
we're going to use that export go 111 module and we're going to turn that as on so we can essentially pull down any version of a package that we want from github then we're going to go get that package and then we're going to cd into build and we're going to get clone our repository now i have i've had a few questions on this like why am i doing it this way for example to be honest with you the reason why is because i want to be able to pull the latest of my application i don't want to build my application locally and then just use that version in this docker image anytime that i'm updating this docker image or deleting it and recreating it or something like that i want to make sure that i am pulling the latest from my github repository and that's going to be why i'm doing that git clone right there and then on line 10 we have a cd where we're going into build aka our working directory the go web api which is the repository the main directory which as we saw this is where our application is and then we're going to do a go build on that application we're exposing 8080 because remember if we go back to main.go we can see that it's listening on port 8080 so we want to ensure that in docker we are exposing port 8080 from a networking perspective on the container port so our entry point is going to be very very straightforward it's going to be again under build go web api main and then main, that's gonna be our application that's built, our, our executable that's built. So now what we can do is we can create this new Docker image. Now, in case you're not familiar with Docker too much and you're kind of just using this as a getting started, I did put in some instructions in here. So I'm literally gonna copy and paste this. So you know it works, I know it works, and you know that you can follow this without watching this and listening to my voice the whole time. <laughs> so I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna do, oop, that's weird. VS code. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> there we go. Docker build minus T minus T means I'm tagging the image. So I'm, I'm creating it as a Golang web API. That's what I'm creating the image as. That's the image name. And then the dot there means that, okay, you are running it with the Docker file in the current directory. And I just realized that I'm not in the current directory where the Docker file is. So let's CD back up. There's my Docker file. So let's try to do that one more time. <laughs> Again, the dot means that I'm in the directory where the Docker file is. It's looking in that existing directory, that current directory for the Docker file. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and you can see, you get this little security warning, like you're building a Docker image from Windows against a non-Windows Docker host. It's fine, don't worry about that. Um, you're not gonna get like any errors by running this or anything if you're doing that. So we can see here that we have a few steps. One, it got pulled from Golang latest, created that, Dot, uh, that slash build directory, put it as the working directory, run, ran that export, ran the go get on my GitHub, uh, did the build and had the entry point. So with that, let's actually check to make sure this bad boy got created. Okay, so we can see right here that the Golang Web API image was successfully created. So now let's run it so we can actually see it in action. So I'm gonna go back to my instructions here. And this is exactly what you're gonna need. So Docker run, that's how you start a Docker image and it essentially runs and gets in a container gets created. I'm specifying my port. So my inbound port and then the Docker port are both gonna be 8080 because that's where I wanna hit it on. And that's where I want Docker to be listening to it on. TID, TTY, or T, uh, T is a TTY console. I is interactive and D means detach. Now the reason why you wanna detach is because if you don't detach, the container will just continue running in your terminal. And let's say you do like control C or something like that. It'll actually exit out of the container. So with that, let's go ahead and run this. Okay. And we'll do Docker container LS. And we can see that our Golang web API container is running. So we can actually see the port two here. I know it's a little bit weird because, uh, Yep, there you go, because I'm a little bit zoomed in. So you can see that it's running on port 8080 and it's forwarding to port 8080 over good old TCP. So we know that we have our handshake successful and we are all good to go. So let's open up browser. And we're going to go localhost 8080 slash about me. And boom, we can see that our container is running. We also know that I'm not faking this and running it locally like I did before because I'm not running the the uh, the Go Web API locally anywhere. I don't have Go Run or anything up and I'm not, you know, running it locally. We can see that I'm running it specifically in the container. So that's how you can get your Go Web API 
to run or any Go application. This is just a web API because it's easy to show it because you can see the UI. Uh, this is how you can do it. This is how you can take your Go application, package it into a Docker image, run that Docker image as a container, and then see it in action. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.